Hey everybody, welcome to video two in the four video series that I did with Steven Taylor. If you missed the first video where we compared a whole bunch of Zildjian ride symbols this past Tuesday, be sure to check that out via the link below. And if you don't know who Steven Taylor is or you're unfamiliar with his content, he's got a bunch of killer stuff. I've been following his channel for a long time. If you like my channel, it's safe to say you're gonna love his. Just make sure you're subscribed to both of our channels and you've got notifications turned on because you certainly don't want to miss any of these four videos. We had a blast making them. We hope that you're enjoying them. So without further ado, let's talk about burying versus bouncing a bass drum beater. Kick drum beater. Kick drum beat. no, not beaters. Burying the beater. Bur bass drum. Bam! Burying bass drum beater. So this is one of the four videos we've done together. So if you haven't checked out the others, jump over to Steven's channel. And jump over to my channel. And subscribe if you haven't subscribed to both channels. Definitely subscribe, because if you like my channel, you're definitely gonna like his channel. If you like my channel, you'll probably like his channel. And it's probably because we have the same name. We, we and he spells spell, it correctly. We spell so it correctly, S-T-E-P-H-E-N, so what's not to like exactly. about that? Burying versus, versus not, not, not burying. Demonstration. Watching it carefully, make sure it's all in the frame. Did you, did you, did you, did you pass that before I got here? I did. I, mean, I, spent, been, I spent all morning last like, night when you were sitting in traffic this like, morning. Honey, I was working. Does this on look it. okay if I do it this way, or should I? Should I do it with? This? Maybe the beater should be on this side. No, that's going out with a frame though. So let's do it this way. So yeah, I get a lot of questions about: Is it right to bury the bass drum beater? Is it not right to bury the bass drum beater? And really, there's again, there's no wrong answer here. There's just some different results. So as you'll see, whenever we're playing, when you bury the bass drum beater you get a very dead sound. Now, if you've already muffled up your kick drum like crazy, and we have a, we, we've opened up this kick drum a good bit. So it has one small blanket in it. It's not really small, touching either yeah, head. Yeah, it's like a small beach towel that's not touching either head that we have in there. Our interior so blank the, is sitting on. Yeah, and, and um, so if you have one that has like full of pillows and stuff, it doesn't matter if you bury the bass drum beater or not. It only matters whenever we stop, start pulling that stuffing out of there and opening up the drum some. And one thing that I found as far as miking and recording these types of things is um, if you're burying that bass drum beater, it's preferable that you have a porthole in the front of it because that air is gonna just bounce around in there if it doesn't have anywhere to escape. So when you bury it, you're gonna get even more rebound off of that, a little buzz afterwards, which you're going to get when you bury it anyway. But if you don't open up that kick at least a little bit to give that air somewhere to go, you can put your hand there and feel that air pushing out. And engineers will actually reposition the mic because they're getting too much wind in that area. So that's where the air comes out. So if you're bearing the bass drum beater, it's a good idea to keep a hole, a porthole in that reso head. If you're not burying it, then um, not having a hole is not really a big deal because you're going for the overall of the drum, body of the drum. And so if you're not bearing the bass drum beater and it's not stuffed, it's completely open, you may want to test out miking outside the kick drum instead of inside it, because sometimes inside it can get real boomy. Um, but again, it's not a perfect science and you need to experiment. That's the only way we do record. Experimentation. Act like you're a kid. Like literally when you were a kid, you would take things and just play with them. That's what you want to do in the recording studio, just play. And you may find something and be like, I didn't think that would work, but that works. You know, the, the mic a quarter inch outside of the head, tilted back with my wife standing over here and me standing over there, it's a perfect way. One more interesting point, I gotta grab the props uh -oh, though. Uh-oh, props. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Why are you leaving me? All by myself. Oh, where'd my tuning key go? Okay, so we've got these two different bass drum beaters. In this video- Three different bass drum beaters. In the video, we're using this one. It's like a super soft one. And so just to offer this as a side note, something that you do want to avoid if you're burying the beater, you don't want it to flutter where it kind of gets buried, but it kind of bounces off the head also because that doesn't sound so great. So it's like you've got to either bury it or you've got to bounce it. Now, one way to kind of cheat with burying the beater is if you've got a softer beater like this, you can push it into the head and it's not going to do that flutter buzz because it's softer and so the head absorbs it better. It absorbs the impact of the head. So I really like using this when I'm burying it. But having said that, this beater is a little bit heavier and so if you're playing a kind of groove where you're burying the beater, you might want to use a heavier beater that you can really lay into it. 
And, and the reason I said three beaters was you can also use the back side of this. Yeah, the back side is plastic, front uh, side is felt. Yeah, hard that is. It's pretty hard. Like on meat tenderizer. And if you, ever, if you ever get attacked at a gig, you'd be like, can you grab my drum key? Hold on and get this and then you have. This beater offers the best contrast between bouncing and burying because it's soft and it really pulls a lot of nice tone out of the drum the same way a mallet would on a, on a floor tom. Yeah, and that's the one we use. Yeah, this is the one we use. Let's go check it out and see which sounds better. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed that video as much as we enjoyed making it. If you're not already subscribed to both channels, make sure that you are and you got notifications turned on. You don't want to miss parts three and four in the four video series coming up next week. We've got lots of more really great, entertaining, and hopefully informative content coming your way. So jump over to Steven Taylor's channel on Tuesday and back to my channel next Friday for videos three and four. So I will see you guys Tuesday.